okay guys so in this video let's talk about the energy sources for bacteria now let us bring in okay so energy sources are very very important thing you know uh, because uh, energy is required for all the necessary tasks that uh, that anybody for example bacteria in this case can do so for that reason they need to have the source of energy and we know that source of energy actually is the ATP because that's the actual source of energy inside the cell so we need to somehow produce ATP inside the cell either for bacteria or for any other microorganism and for eukaryotic cells also so the smallest form and the packet form of ATP is, uh, of energy is ATP but actually uh, the sources of energy is much bigger and we need to gather the energy from those sources for example for bacteria there are majorly two energy sources one is the light can act as energy source so let me take a color for example here let me okay so light can act as an uh, source of energy as well as chemicals can be the source of energy so these two things acting as sources of energy some bacteria take light as a source of energy some take chemicals uh, as the source of energy now those who take light as a source of energy termed as phototropy that means photo means light and trophy means the level which they take that's why they call the phototrophy so phototrophy and the bacteria who are taking light as the energy source are called phototrophs because they're light dependent kind of situation because except for light they cannot get their energy they take the light they take the uh, energy from light as a photon and it can convert it into ATP inside and for this conversion of light photon energy to ATP remember because light has remember photon to take photon and make ATP from it you need to require a special photo system right so that photo system is very common for plants we know that process is called uh, photosynthesis right because we take the photon which is present in the light and convert it into energy which is ATP during several stage process which is called photosystem using photosystem 1, 2 and many different varieties of photosystem. Now for bacteria who are using light as an energy they should have this photosystem so they are kind of photosynthetic in nature so they can have chlorophylls in them they can have some other kinds of photosystem in between them right. On the other hand those bacteria who are using chemicals as the energy source they are termed as chemotrophs actually because uh, their trophic level is uh, from the energy source chemical so that's why chemotrophs so they can be divided into two types because sometimes they can get the energy from organic chemicals sometimes they can get it from inorganic chemicals now for the organic chemicals the chemicals are glucose acetate etc but for inorganic chemicals it is hydrogen hydrogen disulfide uh, then iron and ammonium these are the different inorganic compounds that can also provide some energy but remember compared to the light source compared to the sun because the light source is nothing but sun here compared to the sun these energies are not that that much high because sun is the big boss for all energy storage so that's very very good but chemicals can also supply it for example organic chemicals like glucose and acetate can supply it inorganic chemicals also supply it in fact mostly common thing for bacteria to get the energy is chemotrophic because they get this energy from carbons right carbon source like glucose and acetate all these things they use glycolysis they use Krebs cycle to generate ATP via the end electron transport system in uh, inside them right so these are the different uh, situations that we can find right so organic chemicals like glucose acetate and inorganic chemicals can be used now if bacteria use organic chemical to derive energy they can be termed as chemo organotrophs because they are using organic source but if they are using inorganic chemicals they will be termed as chemo lithotrophs litho means it's lithosphere it's it's the ground it's earth so inorganic uh, materials are not actually called chemo inorganics but it called chemo lithotrophs so chemo organo for the organic chemo litho for inorganic now in both the cases you can see here from the light it can directly convert ATP via the photosystem photosynthesis but for them who are taking uh, glucose or, or acetate which is the organic sources they use oxygen to derive carbon dioxide and water finally via ITS they produce ATP so this is glycolysis and Krebs cycle and all these stages actually Krebs cycle should be done there is glycolysis only for bacteria to uh, produce those huge amount of energy and for chemolithotrophs they use uh, simply you can see hydrogen and oxygen they convert into water so so oxygen again is acting as a very important mediator in this case to produce energy in this case so in both these cases they are slightly different in their metabolic pathways to produce energy of their requirement right so that's it, that's it guys and I hope that's helpful thank you